Hello crafters, this is Suzanne from A Creative Muse and I'm here with the Acid Green Cloudy Sky tutorial. Just wanted to show you how you can easily make this sky. There are just a few items that I used. If you want to get the same exact thing, I will link and detail everything I'm talking about below so you can take a look because I love using Gina K dye inks. She came together very easily here. When I did my last card with Distress Oxide, this is from the Dancing Halloween Collection. This pink cloudy way, which you can see how the oxide looks a little bit different, minus the splatter. I was thinking of splattering this one, but I loved how it looked so good with the green. I just left it alone. This took me much longer to do than this one. So if you have wrist issues like I do, you may really want to consider getting a few of the Gina K inks. Now, Gina K ink, I only get the little mini ink cubes. I don't get the whole big things of ink. And I've been really liking them. It was actually a question posted on Facebook asking, Hey crafters, what's your favorite ink to blend with? Just going almost a hundred down. Clearly, Gina K. Which was so interesting because I did not expect that. So I bought a few. I've been slowly collecting all of them. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> They're just fabulous and I do like them. I do need to swatch my inks out though. This card is from the Gnome Drive collection and I'll link the video here using Gnome Drive Holiday Dyes. That's the base set with the Gnome Drive Halloween add-on and the coordinating stamp, Gnome Drive Sentiments stamp. Let's talk about what I used. I finally found my grip mat. Speaking of the waffle flower grip mat, this is back in stock. So this is the six by six. I'm pulling off the carrier sheet. What I am blending on though, cause your cardstock does matter. I'm using hammer mill cardstock. I purchased my hammer mill cardstock on Amazon. This is a whole ream of 250 sheets. I use this to glimmer, ink blend, and I can also stamp and color with alcohol markers. So this is a great cardstock. Super smooth, bright white. Love it. You can purchase from some retailers like 10 sheets out of this, but then you're spending like five, six, seven dollars when you could get the whole pack of 250 sheets for 20, 21. Yeah, you do the math. I went with the pack. Hey crafters, I moved up my grip mat so you can get a better view. Here I'm just putting on the white cardstock. I am using Pink Fresh Studio Cloud Builder, just any cloud stencil. I have a lot of slimline ones because when I first got into card making with the scene building, I was making more slimline cards. Those were easier for me when I started doing card making. I like to have my cloud fall a certain way. See that, that bend right there? I like it to be on the outside. <laughs> That's just me. And then this will hold on to it. These are the colors that I used from Gina K and it's only three colors. So it's not a lot. Okay, crafters. So I had to go and get my ink stand because on the top, it says key lime on the bottom. It doesn't say it. The bottom doesn't come with the name. You see it? So I don't want to mix them up. There is key lime, lucky clover and slate, not black, but slate, which is like a dark gray. I'm using some smaller ink blending brushes. I get these from Amazon. I like these because they come with the cover. I can get them with the cover, without the cover. I will put a link for that in case you're interested in getting some of these type of blending brushes, but I do like them for my dye ink. When you finish using these though, clean them off either on a paper towel or on a microfiber cloth to keep the bristles soft. If you let the ink build up, it'll get hard. You're gonna have to wash them and all that stuff, but why not just wipe it off real quick and then you get rid of all that excess ink. I started off with key lime first, like so. Come on in, blend. Let me come over this side. I like to go left and right. See, I'm already creating some sort of depth right there, which is nice. And then I blend up the top. I don't have to hold it with the grip mat, but my habit is just a habit. It's hard to get rid of the habit of holding. Come back in again. And you see what I'm doing? I'm pushing less ink up the top, more ink down here. Just starting the creation, okay? Then I came in with Lucky Clover, different shade of green. Tap it off a little bit. Not much, just a little. And I came in like so. Yeah. 
you see? Then I came in back with some more key lime. Oh, I have to use my hand with that. And blend it out again. Do, do, do. Like this. Then where the magic happened is once I brought in slate. So slate is going to be almost like having black soot. Tap it off over here and come on in. This is all I did to build it up. Now you see how I came on heavy there? I can then bring in back the greens and work them back in if I wish. Okay, then I can come on back in with the green, push it back down. See how the glow is happening? Then I can bring in that key line. Let's fix that little wonk right there. Gonna just blend it out a little bit more so it's not so obvious. See how the ink just smooths itself out? Come in back again with a little bit of this green here. And I did even less blending than that because I did not have that black coming on like that. Take this off. That's layer one. We'll shift it over like so. Let's do layer, layer two. Because of course, anytime I'm doing something on camera, of course, that's when everything starts to go wonky. <laughs> Key lime again. I come all the way up. I try to leave just a hair of white to do like a highlightish type thing. So there is key lime. Lucky Clover. And you can make it as dark as you want, as light as you want. Peel it off. See? Yay! Love! This is the mask for the road. So let me go here, like straight across. This is scrapbook.com mint tape. No, I'm not using yellow tape. That's just a waste of yellow tape. <laughs> so I use my yellow tape for other things like the better press, glimmer, die cutting. I use mint tape for things like this masking okay i'm gonna go ahead and finish up my stenciling Okay, crafters, I'm going to just stop the video here pretty much. My shoulder just kicked in and I'm like, oh, I'm in pain right now. You would blend all the way down to here. Like then remove that and then come like so. And then you come in with just slate or whichever ink you want. And you come in like this. Okay. But I'm going to stop here because here is traveling straight up into my shoulder. I don't know why. That's why sometimes I don't do this type of crazy layered ink blending it's just painful for me but i do find it easier to do with dye inks and quicker than oxide and then you peel this off and that's how you get the line see the line that's actually not so bad <laughs> i'd have to fix this part though but you get the gist of what i'm saying right so i could come here oh gosh who i need to go take an advil <laughs> my shoulder's like hi so this is like a light gray road as opposed to when I blended this one. But I'm not minding this either. I kind of like it light gray with the slate. But you see how the green skies are nice and bouncy and cute? There are different kinds of cloud stencils too. So I like these bouncy ones, but I also have some that are more like this, which is 
smaller. So it just depends. And this one is a great one because you get bouncy on one side, not as bouncy, more layers that you can play with. Cloud Builder. Hello, crafters. I came back into my video the next day. <laughs> Now I'm feeling better. I did want to finish this card because right here is usually where it gets a little messy with the cloud being green, mixing into whatever you have on the bottom or blue clouds with green grass and there's that mix. This is where your tape comes in very handy. Also, I wanted to show you, see how the ink settled now? And it's starting to look just like this one. So I'm going to just look here. I don't want this to mimic exactly that. You see? So I do stuff. I'll flip my stencil over. Just to get a little variety. Maybe I'll go like that. I'll go like this. Why not? Stick this down. So key line first. Tap it off. And come on in. Get a little bit more. See, when you have the ink over here on your glass mat, it stays wet. So you can pick this up and use it. Yet another reason to love your glass mat. This six by six is just way too small. I need the eight and a half inch grip mat. I just need more space. So I'm gonna take my grip mat off. I'm gonna come here on the surface, some mint tape. This is the piece that was down here from the other day. I saved it. Mint tape you can use, it's a little bit. It's not like yellow tape you can use over and over and over. We're actually done with this. Because this is showing down here and I blend wide, I'm gonna go with the larger mint tape. This is sold at scrapbook.com as well. I'm going to just tear it. Normally I cut it with scissors, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to just tear it. All right, so there we go. That's covering, so now I can come down as much as I want, make as big of a mess as I want, because that's how I stencil. Know what kind of stenciler you are. If you are like, you can work in the nice tight areas, nice and clean, then you don't need this big one. If you know you're a hot mess like me, do it the hot mess way protect yourself with a big piece here all right so now here we are again key lime my slate brush and this brush these brushes are stiff that's why i'm getting little spots you see it oh i'm definitely washing it i don't like to wash them over and over and over, but yeah, I think I gotta wash it. You can hear it again, right? The black, you can hear how it's making sound. That means that ink is dried on it. And see how it's giving me little dots? It's okay. Halloween, it's okay. But if you notice that your brush is doing that, it's time to wash it. So there's a little tip for you. Come back in with key lime, but it's not crazy blending. With distress ink, I'd have to come in more and more and more. Here it's just like, I could stop here actually, but let me just go in a little bit more. Want a little bit more of this green right here. There we go. Time for the big reveal. There we go. Now I'm going to take care of this line. Let's go back here. I have a little bit of a white line. Let me see right there. And I'm going to come back in with more of the slate. And I love this Hammer Mill cardstock for this type of ink blending. I thought it was Bristol at first because, you know, everybody recommended Bristol. But now when I'm comparing the Hammer Mill, the Hammer Mill is smoother. And I'll talk about that in another video 
when I'll show you the comparison between Bristol and Hammer Mill. But the Hammer Mill is just great in terms of you can glimmer on it. You can use your alcohol markers with it. Winner, winner, winner. Me gently peel. There we go. Okay, crafters, there is my nice green sky. Let me do a little extra blend right here. <laughs> All right, let me stop. There is my green sky. Ready for another gnome or maybe one of the dancing Halloween images. So cute. This is how you can make your acid green sky. You can also do your pink sky, light pink, a darker pink, and then bring in that slate for the nighttime or black soot. I'm liking just the dye ink. It looks great to me. So I have yet another card here that I can have some fun with. If you put like six layers of it, it becomes too much. I know when you're first playing with these cloud stencils, if it doesn't look right, space it out more, it'll start to look more organic. I had started out the same exact way. I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I was just practicing. So if it doesn't look right, don't beat yourself up. Just go back in again and spread it out. Spread out your clouds. Here, this is only one, two, three, four layers. And then you have that top that started it, okay? Don't forget, Mint Tape, your best friend has a very low price point because this is a scrapbook.com exclusive. So I will put a link for both the regular mint tape and then this larger one. I love this larger one because it helps to protect me from cross-contaminating when I'm stenciling. Also, these Gina K inks, you can find this at scrapbook.com. If you love the colors, I think it's perfect for Halloween. And these brushes, I will go ahead and link them because I love, they don't cross contaminate because they have the little covers. And I'm going to wash these two. This one is fine, these two. To clean them, normally what I do, take a microfiber cloth. I'll put a link for this too, because this is a great buy. This is a Amazon exclusive, product, Amazon Basics. And I love to clean them like so. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash that one. I'm gonna definitely wash this one. They're both stiff. And I clean them off in between and then store them. See how the ink is coming off? But you can get a whole bundle of this. Use them for your stamps. I use it for the better press. Alrighty crafters, everything will be detailed and linked below. Thanks so much for watching. And until the next video, stay crafty, my friends. Give it a try. It's so much fun. And oh gosh, this is great for all your Halloween projects and more. Alrighty, crafters, stay crafty. Bye.